cool. I'm just recording this for the other guys so that they can loop back in because there's another team going at the same time as this one. Um, we should kind of all be have some kind of knowledge of each other's. Uh, the best thing. Let's just Ah, okay, cool. She's on the way. She got me before I got her. She's coming shortly. Is Daniel also joining? Uh, Daniel is a question mark. Do you guys know Daniel or is that someone that Griff knows? No, we don't know Daniel. Okay, uh, has he participated in things over here? But it's not that he's wrong with Jack. Oh, he's there. I don't know whether he'll turn up though. Yeah, I think you can find it. So I would say let's switch from that. Hey Beth. Hey Beth. Uh, sorry, my computer's very slow. So I have like 500 tabs open. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Hi Beth. Hi. How's it going? That's good. So yeah, this is the first time that we actually see each other. Uh, what's there with the mix? Um, <laughs> cool. Um, uh, well, unfortunately, we don't have Brian, who should be waking up at any time. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did not confirm that he was going to come uh, at this hour, so probably, I don't know, maybe if he wakes up, uh, he would just turn in. But yeah. uh, as we are here, this is the first uh, meeting, at least a pre meeting for the duration call. So that means that uh, we should discuss some of the uh, points of what we're bringing to the hackathon and uh, how do we interplay with the other team. And uh, 
Wait, is this the organizers or no? Yeah, this is the organizer called, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Uh -huh. uh, that will happen uh, when is it tomorrow at 12.30. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, discuss a little bit between us uh, uh, what we're thinking about. And then, so that as we go there, we have a, a solid story that matches also the other teams. Yeah. Also, Daniel joined. Nice. Hello. Hi. Everybody. How are you? Good, good. Wow. Oh, I have some great beards happening. Yeah. <laughs> Intellectual. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, the project. Well, when uh, me and Josh met uh, at the deep dive, we we're just talking about this uh, uh, what we, were, we wanted to build, and then we basically realized, like, okay, we're building the same thing, so uh, let's just build it together. And uh, in, on our side, we've been developing the concept of um, uh, well, it's a pretty, uh, pretty big thing to explain. Uh, it's a kind of operating system, planetary operating system, and uh, within uh, the components of the system, we have some of the things that uh, uh, is doing, and some of the things that still needs to be done. There are token funding curves. There are uh, curation markets. So. Um, there are actually more things like uh, mutual currencies, uh, but we're not going to touch it here. Uh, but it's something that uh, um, w what we did was a design for um, a system that is allowed to achieve a certain objective, and across this objective, it uh, needs to be a fair trade system. So, um, what we thought to bring at the hackathon was. Um, a marketplace, a marketplace for the gifting economy. And economy, sorry, gifting. So the gifting so, economy. Yeah. Cool. So that's why we call it the excess exchange because I mean, usually when you uh, gift something, uh, I mean, it's something that. As you uh, you have in the in excess. I mean, you cannot give something you don't have, right? So as long as you say I can get rid of this, so it's not into your substantial needs, you're gonna be able to just part from it. And the idea is that as you, the more you give, so basically as you give to the community, then we want to have a sort of a algorithms on top that is gonna be able to define. What is the value of your contribution? And uh, uh, that contribution, uh, then basically the system kind of puts a price into what it is that you give, and then you will be able to re to take back from the system the value that is uh, maybe gifted by some other person. So the idea is that we are going to be able to simply uh, exchange, interchange. Um, uh, at a fair trade, because we all agreed on the rules that basically defines how values is in the chain. Now, this sounds a little bit, uh, uh, you need to wrap your head around some of these concepts, and uh, also it, it, uh, it, it is difficult to explain it in a, in a, in a snippet, but uh, um, in practice for the hackathon, how does that look like? So con let's consider that we have uh, multiple DAOs, and each of the DAOs has the uh, token bonding curve, so people are incentivized to join early. But the DAO has a purpose, right? So you would actually get people funding the DAO using either on your general uh, any asset that has a, a monetary value. And then within that DAO, then you will have like ways of proposal, assignment, and, uh, and sharing tokens and so on. Um, but that is not contained, right? So you have only that purpose. You have you, you coordinate around that purpose, but you have one purpose. 
So what we actually wanted to do is to create a factory of all kinds of DAOs with all kinds of purposes so that we would just replicate it. And as we replicate it, we actually also add some components, some variables into the DAOs that uh, or some protocol, let's say, within the DAOs that is able then to interact with the protocol across the DAOs. And, um, well, right now, of course, I, I can continue and go into the, how this protocol looks like in terms of uh, valuing the resources. But uh, uh, let's have a round for now of, uh, of uh, you know, where are we at? Let's start with the, uh, well, Matt, what do you think about this? Muted. I think you're muted. Yeah. So um, I like the idea in general. I don't. I'm curious to know whether um, you know y'all have uh, thought through specifically what the mechanism is because I have some different ideas around. Um, so I basic. So I've been exploring like you know in you know the U.S. legal system obviously, but you know in legal systems, what is actually the function of um, you know, the function of taxes versus the function of equity is like an abstraction in a system in terms of like um, the impact that that has on governance and on um, basically like pricing within a closed system. So there is something, you know, that I was going to in terms, I don't, uh, I am down for, you know, a different algorithm or a different protocol for determining this, but something that I would encourage thinking about, um, I don't know if this is necessarily the best article, but just the first one I Googled about like, you know, this is how property taxes are calculated. So if y'all, you know, I can explain this um, better. I'm going to send it right here. Um, you know, and the point of this, you know, again, is not to be like, oh, we should do this like the government, uh, the government does, but um, I'll just read, you know, like, so I think, you know, we're all in a similar space of like, you know, abstracting these uh, ideas for how they would work in a token system. So, you know, for this set, uh, this thing says, you know, um, uh, if there's no, if there's access to public services, which, you know, in the DAO is like the services of the DAO, um, you know, an assessment of the value of, you know, property, you know, the, whatever the property is happening in the commons, you know, might be higher. If the assessor, this is the part that I think is especially valuable. This is the link that I just sent in the chat. It's like, if the assessor feels that the land has the potential to be developed, it can lead to a higher assessment and more taxes for the owner. Um, understanding how property taxes are calculated is important for making sure the appropriate rates are charged. And, you know, what I'm, what I'm getting to do with that is this idea of there being, you know, if we're looking at, you know, a um, kind of curation market or like a, um, you know, a bonding curve type scenario for, you know, determining how value is allocated within the DAO and, or, you know, within this like series of DAOs or whatever that we're looking at, then making sure that there's an assessor function based on this prediction of, you know, if the assessor feels that the land has the potential to be developed or, you know, in our case, um, you know, if the assessor and, you know, with the assessor being a protocol in some way, if the assessor feels that there's a likelihood for, you know, one project to be um, more successful than another or have a quicker impact or be a better use of money. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Um, or I might be just jumping too much into specifics since I was in Denver and super familiar with what what that one was or I could give a summary of like how they fit together potentially. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that's what the sort of thing that you might be asking, but I think this could be an elegant way possibly for it to work. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... I think definitely we will need a way to incentivize the right uh, projects and uh, and uh, to value the right projects correctly. But uh, for this hackathon, for in general, we just use the tabular as approach. So we just say, okay, we start with nothing, and uh, we do have DAOs committing to different projects. And the idea is that if I contribute to one hour of my time to this project, how does that house our as a 
body of another product. So basically, um, it's after the alpha ads, after the whole communities are making all the framework, it's really something, something across the DAO, or whatever I brought it from in the DAO. Uh, oh, I think you were cutting out. I'm so sorry. What was yeah. the what was the last like that you said? <laughs> okay. Could so, you also speak up, please, man? Uh, your microphone's pretty quiet. Yeah, can you, oh, sorry, Maybe it's probably my internet being bad. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, how do we value? Um, contribution other than monetary. Right, so this is the kind of question we're trying to answer here. Mm -hmm. um, what can, can we basically have a, a, a way to value the contribution that one person gives into a DAO so that then you could actually get resources from another DAO? Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. Then, then of course, um, the such DAO should actually be sponsored more or should be uh, more outside of the of the exchange itself. Because what we're doing, we're using uh, um, what we want to do is really bring back everything to the resource-based pricing and the resource being atomic. Okay, so I have Daniel? a question, but you can shoot. Is that Daniel? Sorry, was Daniel getting called there? I'm not sure. Oh, okay, um, sorry. Um, I was going to ask, so what we have is we have a bonding curve with a reserve pool. Uh, that will probably be fixed in die, which is monetary, but nonetheless, you still have uh, die going in and tokens from this curve coming out. So the curve tokens are a non monetary resource of the entire DAO. So we need to figure out an exchange mechanism for the tokens that are a byproduct of each of these curves. Is that about oh. right? Okay, cool. So let's get me back on track. In a way, let's put it. Uh, uh, let's say to produce something, you need to sum up multiple resources, mm -hmm. and that basically creates the resource above. So in a way, this is a sort of a recipe. Yeah. If you have these resources, you can create this this one, the higher one, right? Oh, yeah. So I think what I was asking is, is that kind of an open uh, question that we're out right now? Like, how are we going to do that? Or are we just, because, um, uh, sorry, because uh, I guess I was like, oh, in, in terms of that being the question, I was like proposing a possible solution. So are, I was just curious, like, are we figuring out like what the actual like calculation, how the actual calculation will be done? Or do you have like a suggestion of how um, you think the calculation will be done? Um, cause yeah, um, a bit of both. <laughs> so we do as, okay. as a, but, uh, uh, but, uh, well, of course, depending on, uh, how the whole thing looks like, the options or solutions. Um, so the tokens out, sorry to interrupt you, mate. Uh, the tokens yeah. that are kicked out of each of the bonding curves also thus need to be tied to another meta token. From the sounds of it, yeah, yeah. I think basically what we can do is make a conversion. As you basically earn your token within a DAO, you actually exit the DAO, and then in that moment you would be able to turn this token into uh, a die, for instance. But uh, the thing is, like the value that you have generated, you will have to look at basically the resources as a kind of like this. Uh, Knowledge base, mm -hmm. which is your contribution into a value that then can be exchanged for uh, for anything that's monetary. Do you feel 
you get a snapshot of what actually resources, uh, uh, how the resource ecology looks like. And uh, in that moment, you can turn that into a price. Uh, any questions about all of this? First of all, about using uh, kind of a bonding curve to exit, or at least let's say to transfer non-monetary uh, contributions into something monetary. Wouldn't that lead, first of all, to kind of having an approximation for each item based on how many tokens in that bonding curve you have, and then you could buy price and like buy more of that good and sell it for like less of the bonding curve, and then you would just recreate basically. The, you would remake the internal price in the comments of that would be the market price somehow. So that that part I don't really understand. And then I, I was wondering like how much in what you were saying like how do you value each item or like how much each apple is in an orange? Mm -hmm. uh, what is this? Is this okay. 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 So uh, 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 well, maybe I can mention something. You can talk a little bit about how. We see okay, the, for, for the sake of example, we can just say that uh, an apple and an orange, the resources that make an apple and an orange are their letters. Right? So an apple is an A, two P's, an L, and a U. Right? Yep. And the uh, orange, so on. Um, if we have basically the sum of the resources, then you can create the uh, you can create that good. So what we do is we need to map what resources make what, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you can well, to make an A and a B and a so we, uh, to make all these resources, it also takes some some uh, some resources itself, right? So what we need to do is kind of like get from the output of each DAO. And try to crawl back on what actually is required to make that. And the idea here is to map that, to just really create all this topology of recipes. Mm -hmm. So, and then when we get at the leaves, we will actually have some relative uh, uh, value. Okay? So, we don't have to, to, to start with an, an absolute value. We can have an absolute value. And then we can see, well, this thing is supposed to cost more because of these many resources that were needed here and these many resources that were needed here. You, you talked about uh, there being an algorithm. So first, like, how much does the algorithm decide? So is the algorithm saying, OK, you said you made two apples, and I verified you made them, so I give you x units of labor or whatever it is, like arbitrary units, to make this? Or is it like a vote? So every time somebody contributes to the DAO, they said I contributed this, and I think it is worth that. And the DAO decides what is this kind of price, and it updates. Like it gives more tokens to people who give more. Like how much is a vote? How much is an algorithm? What is the I yeah? Said. So like we 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 try to get it uh, to get everything as mathematical as possible. So as in uh, with naming out opinions, just getting basically thermodynamic physics into the into the equation. So we start from a, a, a physical scientific approach on to how much does it take to what is the embedded energy into this or this or that. And then basically we sum it up. We sum it up as we go up into the value chain. So in the moment that uh, you end up uh, you end up at the at the end of the value chain where you basically say what is the cost of producing this, you would actually have the whole value chain basically collapsing into that price point. And then uh, what you can do is something in between this value chain can actually be replaced by something that is cheaper. Then, of course, then the cost becomes cheaper. So now we're, we're going to be able to incentivize a shorter value chain and also with less uh, use of energy and resources. In fact, when you do a resource-based pricing that economizes, it means using less resources. That's, uh, that's what you can do. Uh, and the algorithm. I mean, the yeah. algorithm is the, uh, we, we don't have the, we have a pretty well defined uh, definition of what it's supposed to be, but of course, the people would be able to then sleep like, do we want more CO2 or less CO2, right? So the, there are 
functions like this for people who would be able to control parameters. We, we're not going to say we decide for everything. Uh, everybody should be able to decide the parameters, but we need, we need to basically create the frameworks to do that. But that's maybe also outside of the exchange itself. The exchange should be able, it's just about giving the right value to the, um, bringing your contribution that you did in somewhere and getting a reward somewhere else. So, so do you have, um, oh, just in terms of thinking about, you know, what this algorithm would be and um, how it would work, like, do you have, um, like, what, what could you share about, you know, like, what you're um, envisioning for that or, like, what, like, what would be the useful, because um, I think, you know, for us, you know, to, um, ah, sorry, it's like cutting out on my thing. Um, yeah, for, for us to, um well, could, could some people turn off their microphone if anyone has it on? I think there's a lot of feedback. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, do you have anything you could share for, uh, you know, how you are thinking the algorithm could work? So I think um, what I was mentioning, I think, is, you know, an example of, like, several models to look into for, um, you know, how would this algorithm actually function as kind of a, um, you know, first step for saying um, how can we make this work in, you know, a really efficient way that we can, um, you know, actually ship during the hackathon. Um, and um, you know, think, of the think, of, think of the token engineering from there, because um, uh, I think we were talking about the same thing, and that's like one of, you know, several possible things. Um, so, yeah, just curious to know, you know, what... Um, uh, I don't know, yeah, if you have any things you can send on, you know, just, yeah, what the algorithm actually is, or, like, where, where, and, um, uh, sorry, my, my computer keeps, like, cutting out weirdly, so I don't know if y'all can hear me, or if I can hear myself, um, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm gonna just try typing it in the side. <laughs> you were coming through clear, Beth, I just had the mic, mic off when I said it to you. <laughs> okay, in that case, yeah, so, uh, sorry, the short version of what I'm asking, and hopefully this will come through clear all the way, is um, what what do you have so far with how the algorithm will work so we can build from there in terms of thinking of, okay, the algorithm is the first step, how does the token engineering work from there? Um, like, do you have any documents you could share so far, or what are the elements that you already have in place so that we can um, think of that as the first step? I think he might have stepped away from the computer for a second. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So regarding the uh, the whole architecture, we basically have a lot of things written down, but uh, non not an official document. So we have like a, a maybe like an entire book, but uh, that, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, yeah. So we uh, we love to share everything and, and really bounce you know bounce ideas also with you and, uh, and uh, you know the entire system design and, and basically yeah build this from there. But uh, specific for the hackathon, um, there was um, there was a request from uh, uh, the truck uh, sponsor, right? Mm -hmm. And the request was like. Uh, we need to be able to exchange asset inclusive banking so that everybody can, is able to join. And that's why we actually wanted to bring this uh, to uh, the hackathon under this track because then we say, okay, we do have, uh, we're going to build an exchange uh, and we're, so that people are going to be able to uh, trade their assets uh, back and forth 
and uh, across the DAO. What, what's what's nice what's nice thing about doing it with Vivid is also the fact that uh, um, we're talking about a sharing economy in that case, or like a, a gifting economy even. So um, you know problems. Or they, they dissipate because I mean, if we say, well, we let the algorithm decide to value the contribution, it does not necessarily have to have an exact value in, in market terms because it's a gift anyway, right? Hey. So that is the <laughs> that's a key. Hey, hey, that's nice. Uh, so um, that shorts shortcuts a lot of uh, uh, issues. Uh, that you can have with, with the taxes and the, the whole other kind of things, but uh, uh, yeah. So I, I don't think we're gonna be able to build the entire uh, algorithm at the hackathon, but uh, a few components. Uh, each of the team basically is working on a different component already. So as we uh, as we move forward, I feel that we will be able to uh, click things together and then. Uh, we will basically, uh, yeah, be one step closer to be able to implement the entire thing. But uh, I'm all up for even during before the hackathon to share all the to have a discussion about the system design, uh, so that we'll be able to uh, maybe yeah, you know, go there faster. Um. So I think um I wanted uh I think that that it is not only you know, that it is possible to, you know, have the algorithm in place. Um, uh, I guess, you know, I brought that up because I've been designing a very similar model for the Starfish ecosystem, which is an ecosystem of spaces where, you know, there are shared resources that, you know, are allocated based on the value of time that people put in. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I think, a model that is achieving the things that you're interested in and, you know, specifically to be, um, you know, a token engineering system and, you um, the system. So, if you guys would be down for, um, you know, I think it, I think it would be incredibly helpful, you know, for actually linking the teams together in like a functional thing. You know, if y'all were down to kind of have an algorithm decided ahead of time, and I know that um, Danny has been working yeah, on some similar yeah. as well. Um, if you know, if y'all were down for that, I think it could be really cool for kind of accelerating us along. If we wanted to like try out one of these, um, you know algorithm models um you know that, that it, and that's why i was like okay you know what are the primitives you're working from so i could make sure that the two models that we've been thinking of you know would fit in accurately um but yeah just wondering y'all's status of that because then we would be able to have you know an mvp of the system kind of spin up um or spun up <laughs> so yeah so to me before you head on mate i oh know that's me coming out of feedback um I, I was saying uh, it might be good then for you guys to do a resource share of some sort or uh, decide on a collaborative workspace at which point you can make sure the resources you so that you're speaking a shared common language and sharing knowledge between each other so that when it comes yeah. time to collapse down to one page then it is uh, the same page cool so um do you all use real time board I'm generally open to anything. Um, cool. So it's like this awesome, um, you know, kind of, it's like a, you know, digital whiteboard basically. So I, like we can start a real time board and share it with you guys. Um, so, and also, you know, some background about me, cause I, I realized y'all probably don't know me and are probably like, who is this person? And like, why, you know, would I know what I was talking about. Um, but basically, um, you know, I guess I do like token engineering and ecosystem design and, um, uh, oops, I lost him. But, um, you know, we've been so I'm uh, working with Dow stack on kind of making, you know, token primitives for like how, um, you know, how can we design like, you know, TCRs and token bonding curves to like achieve this sort of thing and, you know, extract, you know, token primitives from that and also use that to like build up, you know, component and pattern libraries for doing these agent centric models and ecosystems. So, um, what you know, but, you but, uh, so, what's up? So you, so you said you have a pattern library. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that we're working on building out. So unfortunately, we don't have the funding to really do that yet. <laughs> but that's that's one of the things that we're hoping to get done with this MVP. But in terms of, um, so we have like this uh, the mechanism design working groups, and which is I guess 
um, you know, where we go through and look at, um, you know, different ecosystems or different projects that people are working on and, you know, start with um, an ecosystem map and say, you know, who are the players in the ecosystem? What are, you know, what is their incentive structure? You know, what is, um, you know, basically make like a DAG of, you know, how incentives flow between them? What are the like social sensors and like waiting that like ends up happening? Um, you know, what are um, the mechanisms currently at play that end up impacting, you know, how value flows um, and, you know, the relationality of the entities to each other? Can and then it? from that, What's up? Can we use that map to model things? Yes, definitely. That's what I would love to do. So, um, you know, if y'all were down to kind of go through, um, you know, the, the process that I do for that, then I think it could be um, super valuable because, you know, I go from the ecosystem map to, um, you know, an agent model map for each of them. And then from that, you can start to really, um, you know, understand how value flows around in the system and then start to make changes and adjust based on that. And, um, it's, uh, you know, very, it's very aligned with, um, you know, a lot of Zargum's works. I think it will end up working, um, you know, super well to fit into their stuff. And, um, uh, I just think it could be super cool in terms of, um, you know, actually building something out that's, uh, you know, usable and is able to slot in to their stuff. So, um, and it's also like super cool because, um, you know, I work with, uh, Corey and Seth and, um, like Billy on different things in real life in terms of, you know, making these agent centric, um, you know, user, user centered or agent centric, depending on like what frame you're looking at it through, um, token models to kind of power, you know, creators and ecosystems in such a way that, um, you know, controls for comparative advantage, controls against collusion and all these different things. So, um, you know, if y'all agree with me that it would be like super cool to actually have like a usable MVP that like slotted in with the other projects, um, that, in a way where you know, yeah, the whole we, thing was usable together, then that would be cool to explore. <laughs> we, we want, but I also don't want to be like, we, we want to build working code. Uh, we want to have something coming out of this hackathon that actually works runs and hopefully provides some value to someone somehow um you know we're awesome. all going to be very very first stages on this i can imagine the bonding curve is not a hyperdimensional 10 plane of whatever you know it's a single sigmoid so that's fine um yeah we probably want to leave whatever so looking at this group's kind of meta Thing. It looks like we're still actually waiting for that meta hyperdimensional curve that fits in all the things, and you know, so it m would because we're going from the seams of it from die into the curve token, and then we're valuing curve tokens across each other by the same yeah, yeah. meta token. So that token yeah. itself has to come from somewhere. Uh, it might be generated by the lads curves, but then, you know, I'm, I'm not sure we got to talk to team one there, I reckon, because we've got to make yeah. the output of their curves tokens work with both a curation registry, which is what's happening over team two side, I believe. But at the same time, we need it to be valuable across ecosystems and registries and other curves. So it looks like we need to kind of have an open point for that kind of meta that isn't quite in place yet. Um, um, totally. So what I, what I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, is it not in place because we are defining it or that it's something that will emerge based on um, something that they do so we aren't able to define something specific yet because what we define will be based on their work it's a bit of a, a bit of both really um like i'm pretty sure zargon doesn't have a 10 dimensional hyper dimensional bonding curve ready to go that will fund the commons always and you know not fall over when a bunch of irrational actors do a bunch of irrational things so i'm pretty yeah. sure that curve doesn't exist yet um which is yeah. why we're going for the simple flavors and then building and iterating um so we should possibly align with their team on creating yeah. that extra dimension um yeah however we are still to work out the mechanics in our group of what that yeah. kind of should look like and how we're going to move towards it so i had a meeting with my mentor yesterday about like some different things i was thinking of about like how to use a rep token in the in this way so um you know extrapolating rep to um 
you know, basically like cover up, act as like, you know, act as a bullion in the system so that it's like, um, you know, on like the Y axis is like, you know, between one or zero, but like uh, determine like a relationality that, um, you know, would place that sorry uh, this is this is makes much, much more sense for the graph um but yeah i mean i think okay so i think it'd be very valuable to talk to their team i'm very curious to know um because you know depending on what they end up thinking about and deciding to do then it's like there is a certain way that it could function with um rfts there's a certain way that it could function with rep there's a certain way that it could function with um you know a launch token and another token that was like an abstraction of um like an, an assessed value abstraction that was positioned differently than being an NFT or being wrapped. There's a lot of different cool possibilities that I've been looking at because um, I've been designing a very similar system to figure out, you know, within the Starfish ecosystem, which is, um, you know, this uh, SF in New York and Berlin's kind of system of spaces and collective of projects that, um, uh, whatever I like lead research and design for. And so I've been having to figure out, you know, if we actually have the DAO structure in place and start having funding come in, you know, to fund different things, how is it going to work? So I guess, you know, that's why I like thought about this so much, I don't know, in this um, deep way or whatever. So, um, but, you know, I can't, I can't know what, um, you know, exactly what curve makes sense, exactly what token model makes sense and which levels of dimensionality, because there's a lot of potentials for dimensionality that are super interesting based on what we're trying to control for. So, you know, when I was mention mentioning, you know, one model, one way of thinking about it is, you know, this property tax model, which isn't saying, you know, this is what the government would theoretically do. It's the, you know, if you think about property taxes in as an abstraction and say, um, you know, uh, there is this amount of land that's the commons, it's divided up into, you know, units of ownership by entities, um, you know, the, what does it actually mean to have, you know, the ownership of that and like what is between, you know, uh, like having the privilege of owning something but and having governance over it, but then having staked into it and, you know, uh, how does like the value of something that you have in it impact like your level of governance and, you know, who decides that. And that's why I, whatever, like posted the thing about the assessor. So anyways, based on like, you know, the scope of well, the like assessor, validation, the the assessor scope, is um, important. whatever. So, uh, as, as a primitive yeah. having an assessor, whether algorithmic or through token creation registries or from a hyper dimensional curve that is a meta token to them all, that they're, they're all assessment methods and we need to kind of look at assessment methods, I think, in general to figure out which one they're going with. Um, maybe yeah, Roberto yeah. has a few ideas on this as well himself. Um, I, yeah. I'm sure you could probably make a list on the methods you're familiar with. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, it's so entirely dependent on like what our scope of deciding this stuff is. Um, you know, if, if we were creating the entire system from scratch and starting, you know, like starting with something else, then, you know, it would just change it so much. So, you know, I guess like, you know, what, what are you able to say now in terms of, you know, fixed things that the other teams are definitely doing that we can take into account versus, um, you know, what, what things we definitely will be, um, determining or whatever. Okay. So I can tell you for sure, team one are building a sigmoid func I, I believe it's sigmoid. Actually that could be wrong, right? But they're building a bonding curve and they're building that mechanism yeah, yeah. according to Zarg and spec. Um, I believe it's called the Taylor series expansion. I'm not a mathematician. I have no idea what that means. I'm still to figure okay, it out, but that, yeah. that's one of the things that they're doing. Team two, yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're supposed to be working on, um, it's not quite token curated registries, it, it's conviction voting and they're still figuring out the exact methodologies around conviction voting. Um, I, I'm yeah. looking forward to looping back in with them because I see this as a did standard thing potentially on Sovereign. Um, which is a capabilities network because that's a pairwise connection which gives you if A and B and then you just chain up that whole web of trust to give you a balance which is kind of what we're doing here. So it, I, I reckon cool. that oh, they're not going to be a curator. Yeah, yeah. I reckon, I don't know, 
uh, they might end up be on level K's registries, but I don't think that is actually what conviction voting is, and I think that it will end up on DIG standard, probably on one of these capabilities networks that will be at the hat. Uh, team three, yeah. then, um, they are having a meeting right this minute, and uh, they, I don't think, even know that they're called team three at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, what is the, yeah, what exactly are they doing? I guess they'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, they don't uh, know. Well, oh, it's happening real time. Someone might know now. It's like Schrodinger's team call. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah it's, it's one of those. Um, but they are doing the proposal side. So somewhere between uh, team two and team three, there's a trigger function of going like, uh, I believe team two is, uh, what's it doing? It is creating, yeah, it's making the list of asks, I guess. So um, they're building the onboarding and then there's getting off the list and being put into visibility, which is the trigger function. So team two is doing okay. the onboarding side and I guess team three is doing the, now you're visible and floating and moving around on the DAPS cards of sorts. So by the trigger function, do you mean like where the step function is in the bonding curve or um, triggering the whole process for starting? I believe it's a separate side to the first side, but I actually don't know. Um, the lads have managed to confuse right. me because I've been in I've been in TCR land, moving to conviction voting land, and I've never had anyone yeah. clarify exactly what conviction voting is just yet. I'm kind of piecing it together for myself. Oh. So. Oh yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you if you it, want. It's all right. I I, yeah. I kind of know that it's just yeah. continuous signalling, and that that's fine. That's me going happy, 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 or sad, sad, sad oh, for yeah. Facebook to pick up what I'm doing. You know. Um, yeah. And then that abstracts higher into votes and stuff. Um, which is why I and reckon it will be on a payload be connection. Like that. The bonding curve. So that's the Taylor expansion would be how the TCR the uh, used to set the bonding curve, correct? Uh, how the Taylor series expansion is set in the bonding curve? I'm, I'm asking if the bonding curve is being set by um, like the TCR and that's how the other two tie together. So, um, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, um, the bonding Robert. curve is the yeah. funding in out function. So it's funding um, and reserve. Right. So, Whereas the so conviction voting I... is more kind of deciding what to do with the funding, uh, whether it's a relevant cause and how much visibility it should get. Um, yeah, totally. Oh, so I guess what I was asking is like, um, you know, those de are, do those determinations set the bonding curve or not or that or is it the bonding or uh so, so what i don't know what this one like model that i made that we had talked about at one point was like um using the tcr itself to instead of the bonding curve being like set an arbitrary parameter then you can set um you can use a tcr to set the parameters of the bonding curve yeah. which would make sense for the Taylor expansion because like basically it would be saying um you know like the weight, the weights that are determined by the social sensors would end up being, you know, converted into like, you know, um, the specific dimensions by which, um, like the turnover of the step function would be triggered, you know? So anyways, I don't know. I, I can like ask them or whatever. Yeah, I think we should look <laughs> um, but that, back that, in with That's them why I was one. like, oh, I really definitely want to, um, yeah, it'll, that'll be good to have the information of the teams because I was like, oh, in order, you know, for us to design like, um, you know, a multi-dimensional, um, you know, this multi-dimensional function, then we need to just, you know, be very aware of like exactly what um, is happening, whatever, with the other ones. So um, we'll look back in with them. Um, yeah. Roberto, uh, we have on one side um, an integration uh, issue, as in we need to have, uh, we need to draw for each other, for the whole teams, the entire teams, the big picture, but really seriously draw it, uh, right? Where all the pieces fit together. So we need to get there definitely as soon as possible uh, so that then we would see basically what of the stuff that the other people are doing, where can we back into actually the function. Yeah. yeah. 
So, uh, because of course, I mean, also I'm talking about, uh, I, I, we don't actually have the whole insight on uh, currently the, the code base of Givet. So, for us, it would be actually quite a uh, steep learning curve uh, to not only to get the new stuff, but also get updated with the old stuff. So, if we really have to go into integration, we might need actually one person that has been, uh, that has an entire overview of the code. Um, and I don't know, guys, uh, uh, Thomas and Max, uh, uh, from this concept that you hear, uh, uh, how, how familiar are you? Uh, yeah, hi, guys. Uh, maybe we can chime in on uh, our thoughts. Um, Please. Yeah, we, some, some of that uh, material were a bit lost. Uh, so we're, we're both software engineers and uh, we, we're kind of thinking of, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing well shouting at the mic though, that's great. All right, so yeah, we're, we're thinking about some like tangible concrete uh, proof of concept uh, engineering that we, we could contribute. So like uh, something specific maybe with Ethereum contracts, um, something like some component of the system that we could we could uh, focus on, um, and then uh, and then sort of like zoom back out and see the bigger picture. Totally. Um. Max. Um, yeah, like I know for me so far, I must say I haven't been able to grasp a whole lot of where the conversation was going. Like I was able to get a grasp a few things in there and have input on there, but then the conversation quickly shifted, like, once again, the bigger picture. So for me, like, honestly, like, I so far don't really have uh, that much of a contribution to the whole conversation as I'm still trying to grasp, yeah, what we're even about at this point. That's okay. How familiar <laughs> are you with uh -huh. what everyone's doing at the minute? Yeah. So, okay, this, uh, this could be pretty... Uh, uh, a pretty good odyssey, I think. <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in it's already an odyssey of some kind. But uh, I, I say let's form two subgroups within the within the team. One into the mechanism design, which we would really talk about the high level mathematics. But we will need to have a conversion into implementable uh, bits and pieces that we can actually use to put together the MVP at the end of the hackathon, assuming that uh, uh, we, we can't just base all our stuff into what the other teams are doing, so we just use them as a, a placeholder, right? So uh, we would have some function that just spits out some of the information that we want. So in a way, we can start, we can build a, a half simulation that basically says, well, it's, it's written on Ethereum, here's the visualization, here's what's going on. If if you basically replace this function or this array with some function that gives you the output, then it actually does it, right? So I think that that uh, yeah that would be uh, yeah that would give us the space basically to uh, operate and abstract all, all the other teams what they're doing, and so that we can have an easy uh, implementation rather than uh, you know starting waiting for the rest to be. For the rest yeah. to be ready, but uh, still, we will have to know. Yeah, definitely, what's going on because obviously we will uh, we will need to integrate in this stage if, uh, at the hackathon or after the hackathon. Yeah, if, uh, if it's not ready. Yeah. So for the organizers, yeah. think I think we've got probably enough information to tell them about crypto economics that they'll be rather fine. Um, so that will be successful at least. Uh, moving on, though, like, I'm sure we can talk the hind legs off a donkey about curves and s conviction stuff enough to fry them so that they don't know what's going on. Um, but we will uh, perhaps draw up a big map um, and see if we can get the other teams to help us with that because we do need to loop back, I reckon. If we could get um, on a theoretical side, it'd be great to have a list of assessment types, I think, yeah? So that we know that we could work with algos, we could work with TCRs, we could work with the government, whoever wants to be an assessor, we kind of have to create 
a layer for the assessor in some way, and you know that's part of the staff. Uh, the rest yeah. on how we do that will then be dependent on other teams, so we should reintegrate with them. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, I, you know, I think the thing, so I think, um, you know, I think that would be super valuable is, um, you know, so once, you know, what, once we have an understanding of exactly, um, you know, the different questions I was asking about what they're thinking of, um, you know, what token model they would use or as much stuff as they are able to share, you know, as I'm, obviously it's like developing, then, um, you know, once, once we have that stuff down, because I know it like sounds super high level and all this craziness, but as soon as, um, you know, I have answers to that in terms of, um, you know, just there, there are certain things that like we can't know going forward, but like once there, once that is very clear and there's not a black box about these certain things, then, um, you know, it's like, I, I guess I'm so like a product designer. So then it's like very clear to break out from, okay, this, these are the high level things of, you know, like in general what we're doing um you know from a storytelling level and also from you know kind of this mathematical level of like this is how we can make you know this meta curve or whatever it ends up being um to saying okay these are like the very specific steps that we need to develop in terms of like you know these are how this like smart contracts would come into play if that's a part of it or like this is you know what we actually need to build on like the front and back end for it to work so i think um you know i don't know how much of that we're trying to do before the hackathon or like what the time frame for that is so um, we're trying to do as yeah. much as possible before the hackathon right? that's, that's, that's the plan okay awesome okay that, i think that's really good so um you know if it would be possible you know if like if Zargum is the main person that's like figuring out exactly what they're, um, you know, exactly what uh, they're going to do for these different things, then, you know, it would be useful to talk to him or whoever is deciding that. And then um, it will be, once that is known, then it will be super clear to break out the next steps and say, okay, this is exactly what we have to do, you know, like, and make sure that people know how to use SimCAD and like these different things. So, yeah. Um, or if we're doing that, I guess, or maybe we're not there. Currently, um, well, currently we're we're designing this system, but we should make use of our resources, such as people like Griff, Jeff, and Zargon, who are in each other's presence, learning about uh, all kinds of fluid dynamic systems. Um, so yeah, we should tie back in with them. This is kind of an iterative process. We're going to have a whole lot of uncertainty all the way through this. Um, so it is just about figuring out where we are, where we want to be next doing that and figuring out where we are now and where we want to be next. So at this point, we probably want to find out what Griff, Jeff, and Zargum think for meta, uh, the, uh, what's the term we were using it called? Uh, assessor, the meta assessor, and yeah. how we should <laughs> deal with yeah. the meta assessor. Um, to me, well, it seems like we should be kind of leaving it open for a multi-dimensional bonding curve but then putting a placeholder meta assessor there that will kind of, as this curve prints tokens and this curve prints tokens, this curve prints more tokens, you know, um, something like that. I don't know what exactly it would be. We'll find out, yeah. loop back, and try to keep as much on paper as possible, I reckon. Cool. Well, I think it's also, I mean, once we figure out the multidimensionality, which just, I don't know, I think it would be super useful, you know, to talk to them directly and, like, understand how they're thinking about it. Um, mm. Then, you know, once we're aware of what well, I, I can tell possible you, scope we want to apply, yeah. I, I, I can tell you that uh, once, on these hyperdimensional curves, they're thinking that it's too dangerous to do right now. Um, because you... you well, we, we don't know, like, this is the thing with blockchain and, for instance, governance. Like, you, you, like, when, when, when we released EOS to the world, we didn't expect what would be the outcome of colluding block producers that are then create, creating an ogliarchy type game where they will, you know, they'll, they'll vote for well, I can't remember what the score is. Users that vote them in then get paid and stuff like that. Like, But there's a whole bunch of unintended consequences that came from releasing on-chain governance that was improperly designed. Oh, yeah. So I can tell you now that Zargon, Griff, myself and Jeff will be like, this is hyperdimensional curves. It is way too dangerous to chuck out in the blockchain space at the minute. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, but, but I mean, that's where the role of the assessor comes in with regards to like the relationship between the assessor and the multidimensional mm. curves. Like you, know, you can set the parameters, of the multidimensional curves based on, um, you know, the constraint or, you know, you can, you can constrain the curves with the, I mean, the dimensions oh. with the assessor and vice versa. So, um, well, yeah, anyways, now, we're looking forward to working on that. Now, now, now that we've actually yeah. thought that about awesome. that, um, yeah it might actually make sense to move more towards um, a, like, again, the curve the labs are doing, kind of replicate that on a step up, but with a function to remove it on user votes and some way to kind of say that this pool that is the pool of all pools, uh, we need to upgrade it. Yeah. Might um, yeah. Roberto, have you got thoughts? Yeah. Um... I also agree that right now, uh, talking about multi-dimensional curve is a little bit early stage. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, I don't know if it's going to, I mean, in terms of development, I don't think we will be able to achieve it uh, as well. Yeah, uh, I agree. So uh, I would like to maybe, yeah, put a little bit of, uh, I mean, we're going to do amazing things. But uh, in, it, in, ter in terms of what is the minimum thing, minimum that mm -hmm. we can do to actually prove our concept at the hackathon. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have to brainstorm a little about what that could be. Um, on our side, uh, so far, as with my discussion with Brian, that would have been very useful right now if he was in, in the chat as well. Uh, but uh, we've been thinking about really focusing everything in terms of the um, resource ecology. So really mapping out the mapping out how the resources click with each other. So um, how the DAOs request services from other DAOs, which request services from other DAOs. So this necessarily does not necessarily require the, the meta uh, uh, funding curve, um, but it does need the information that the bonding curve would need, right? So, um, and then we basically, as we present the bonding curve or the multi-dimensional bonding curve at the hackathon, we're just gonna say, well, we built the resource ecology that would be the parameters of the bonding curve. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more realistic to, to actually, then if we can manage to implement the whole thing, uh, yeah, that's I awesome. I, I see what you're talking well, about. That's, that's, I like where you're going. Okay, so mapping resource uh, ecology. Mapping resource ecology for the exchange. And obviously, we're going to put a function there, uh, but it's going to be placeholder function, might be one dimensional. Uh, might be, uh, maybe there is multiple inputs uh, to actually define that. So that becomes kind of pseudo multi dimensional, but uh, I mean, we're going to collapse it. Uh, or, or at least just for a uh, for the initial simplicity of an explanation of what's going on, we need to also be able to see what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think, yeah, I think let's, this would actually have, uh, probably after after the this talk, the next talk, we will really set up two different talks, one in the mechanism design, uh, where we would be able to shrink down uh, a set of specs for the devs to be able to, uh, to work it out. And uh, uh, yeah, also specifically, also Max and Thomas, you've been working on a, a resource mapping tool, right? So like the, the new map, uh, maybe that could be even interesting to bring into the game. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. So, uh we know now that we're doing a dev spec call and a meta vision type call, I guess, again, uh, to break them up, yeah? Yep. Okay, yep. Um, so shall we organize that as we go? Uh, are we happy to leave that hanging at the minute while we link back in with the other teams, or do we want to go ahead and think about those now? For me, I would really like to have Brian into the uh, equation. Okay. Uh, be able to actually really set the, the core component that you want to bring in. 
So as long as less is waking up and joins it right now, probably we can wait. We can move the talk to uh, tomorrow morning that you're available, and then uh, yeah, and then so that by the time we get to the to the Croatian talk, uh, no, what's the name? The organizer call. Yeah. We we have a uh, well, we do have a half. Uh, Basically, the concept ready and the and pitch. But I'm sure that they would love the fact that we are not going to talk about pricing, but we're going to talk about resources yes, and for sure. how they fit there. That that's exactly, I think, uh, an exact match with the with what the the truck sponsor wants, and we need to, in a way, kind of make them happy uh, while we develop what we need to develop. And uh, what they give in for that is, as we see it, we will be able to actually reach cities that will be able to test this protocol. So this will be the the real the deal uh, outcome of participating specifically in this truck. What for give it and what and the market that we're building. Okie dokie. Okay. So that's the call is tomorrow at eleven thirty in the morning with the organisers. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear what we have to say. And then after that, uh, well, yeah, GMT twelve thirty CEC. Christ Almighty, time zones. Um, but yeah, I, I'll see see you guys tomorrow or those of you that are there. Um, otherwise, yeah, let's let's rock on and set up those other calls after our organisers call. So if we're around, we can kind of see what what works and form a doddle at that point. Actually, sorry, uh, Beth, ideally, if you still have time later on, maybe like yeah. one hour, but Brian will be awake for sure, then maybe we can catch him there. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, and then so that tomorrow morning we can have a, we can have a call with the devs uh, or just a chat to, to see what happens. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have a meeting, um, a brief meeting, and um, I guess in like an hour, and then I'll be like free to talk after that if that like works for your timing because I know it's getting late there or maybe. <laughs> so yeah, um, cool. So I, yeah, this I'd, is I'd really love awesome. To join as well, Perfect. if you guys are doing that. Sorry, Scott. Yeah. I just say and share a cow link with me as well. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah, I want to join. <laughs> Hell yeah. Cool. Okay, well, talk to you all soon. <laughs> One love skis, see you shortly.